الله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على أشرف المرسلين محمد بن عبد الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومن ولا رب شرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل العقدة من لساني يفقه قولي اللهم جعل تجمعنا هذا تجمعا مرحوما وتفرقنا من بعده تفرقا معصوما ولا تجعل فينا ولا بيننا شقيا ولا محروما إنك ولي ذلك والقادر عليه أما بعد Tonight, inshallah, we talk about hadith number 26 in the 40 Nawaya hadith. And this hadith is narrated by Abi Hurairah, radiyallahu anhu, and it's also mentioned in Sahih Muslim and Bukhari. This is a very authentic hadith. And Abi Hurairah, radiyallahu anhu, قال, قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم, كل سلامي من الناس عليه صدقا. Notice the first word, كل سلامي. And the word sulami has a dhamma on the seen, which is different from salami. So if one is not familiar with the Arabic language and they see this word without the dhamma on the seen, they think it's salami, means saying assalamu alaikum. But in this case, the Prophet is saying kullu sulami, and sulami is a joint, like the finger joints, the arm joints, the leg joints. So here in this hadith, the Prophet ﷺ says, كُلُّ سُلَامِي مِنَ النَّاسِ عَلَيْهِ صَدَقًا Meaning that you are obligated to give sadaqa, to render the due gratitude for every joint that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created in your body and mind. So this statement is directed to the children of Adam at large. <coughs> to appreciate that, of course, we look at other creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We have far more joints that we can use with a uh, fairly decent level of dexterity, like we're standing on you know, two feet, walking on two feet, being able to make rukur, sujood, to lie down, to use our fingers, to manipulate things, while all other creations cannot do that. So here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is relating a message to us uh, at the hands of the Prophet by saying, Kullu sulami means that we are obligated to give the due gratitude for every joint we have in our bodies. And then the Prophet ﷺ mentions a number of different types of salaqat. So in this hadith, the Prophet ﷺ still has that at minimum, at minimum to render the due gratitude for these joints is to not to use them in that which displeases Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, meaning that not to use them in matters that are prohibited. And at minimum also to use them in rendering or performing matters that are obligatory. So this is the Shukr al-wajib means rendering the due gratitude that is obligatory. Not to use these joints in that which disobeys Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in that which is forbidden, and to use these joints in that which is obligatory at minimum, and then it moves on to as sadaqa al-mustahabba. And as sadaqa al-mustahabba is to use these joints in that which is mustahab. And as we know, al-ahkam al sharia the five different rules in the Sharia, in the Sharia, which is the obligatory, the mustahab, the mubah, the makruh, and the prohibited. So we talked about the obligatory and the prohibited. To stay away from the prohibited and to attain the obligatory is the minimum level in rendering the due gratitude for these joints. Achieving the second and the fourth level, which is staying away from that which is makruh, dislike to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and attaining that which is like to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that is sadaqa mustahabba. And of course, we talked about the definition of sadaqa, which is isal al-khayr wal manfa Means allowing khayr, that which is good from a sharia definition, and that where there is benefit in it to reach us or to reach others. If it's reaching us, then it's the type of sadaqa that we are given to ourselves. And of course, if it reaches others, which is known as a sadaq al means the benefit of which is not restricted to me or to you, but it rather also includes those who are benefiting from the sadaq, like sadaq al-mal and the sadaq al-nafila, you know, the extra act of sadaq. And in this hadith, the Prophet ﷺ mentions several types of sadaqat. So he says, كل يوم تطلع فيه الشمس. كُلُّ يَوْمٍ The word يَوْم in the Arabic language, it means a time period. It does not necessarily mean a day. In this context, the Prophet ﷺ says, كُلُّ يَوْمٍ تَطْلُعُ فِيهِ الشَّمْسِ He has defined for us this time period. Why? Because he added to the sentence, 
الشمس, that the sun come out. Meaning that here the Prophet is talking about a time period from طلوع الشمس when the sun rises until the next day, which is طلوع الشمس of that next day. So here, because he added to that statement تطلع فيه الشمس, meaning that the sun rises to the following sunrise, so this is like 24 hours. كل يوم تطلع فيه الشمس تعدل بين اثنين صدقة that you rule between two people according to the Sharia, according to that which is just and fair, that is a sadaqa for you and it's a sadaqa for them. وَتُعِينُ الرَّجُلَ فِي دَابَّتِهِ فَتَحْمِلُهُ عَلَيْهَا And then you will help the man with his dabba, meaning that in this case, like giving somebody a ride or helping someone get into their vehicle or giving someone, you know, the, the fear to you know, ride a bus or catch the metro or any of that, this is also considered the sadaqah, or perhaps to help them load their items, grocery items, luggage, bags, whatever it is, into their vehicle or into their mode of transportation, that is also a form of sadaqah. Then the Prophet ﷺ talks about other types of sadaqah, which is a sadaqah al qawliya means that the one that is considered to be a verbal type of sadaqah, wal kalimatu tayyibatu sadaqah. Al kalimat tayyiba is saying, that which is tayyib, that which is like to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that which is uh, considered tayyib from a sharia perspective. Like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, and we mentioned this ayah repeatedly before, where he says, لَا خَيْرَ فِي كَثِيرٍ مِنْ نَجْوَاهُمْ إِلَّا مِنْ أَمَرَ بِصَدَقَةٍ أَوْ مَعْرُوفٍ أَوْ إِصْلَاحٍ بَيْنَ النَّاسِ So enjoining the good and forbidding the evil, rectifying relationships, mending relationships between two individuals, enjoining as means commanding people to give sadaqah fi sabillah to the masjid, to the orphan, to the poor, to the needy, paying their zakah. Aw islahin bayna al nas, wa may yaf'al dalik abtigha' mardati allahi fa sawfa nu'tihi ajran azima. Of course, the stipulation in all of the deeds, be it the deeds of the heart, or the deeds of the tongue, the verbal sadaqah, or the deeds of the rest of the limbs, the stipulation that is done purely fi sabillah. 100%, 99% will nullify the deed. 99.9% .9 will nullify the deed. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, وَمَا أُمِرُوا إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُوا اللَّهَ مُخْلِصِينَ لَهُ الدِّينَ And they have not been commanded except to establish this deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala purely and sincerely for his sake. قُلِ اللَّهَ أَعْبُدُ مُخْلِصًا لَهُ دِينِ Say, oh, I worship none but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in a state of utmost ikhlas. And this is an issue that we continue to mention frequently, to remind ourselves and to remind those who are listening that the biggest struggle that the Sahaba, the companions of the Prophet have had, is with the intention, is with the intention, knowing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not accept any deed whatsoever, even if it's consistent 100% with the Sunnah of the Prophet unless it's purely offered for his sake, meaning that no hypocrisy, no riya, which is a smaller form of shirk, no association in the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, any entity, any deity, any worldly interest whatsoever. This is something we always have to keep in the back of our minds, and before we attempt to do any action, to perform any deed, to perform any ibadah, we must purify our intention before, and we must maintain that intention throughout the deed, throughout the deed, and we must not change that intention after the deed. This is the biggest offense that Satan tried to take against the children of Adam. It's trying to corrupt their intention before the deed. If that didn't work, to go after them during the deed. If that did not work, to go after them after the deed has been completed. To nullify that deed that's been completed. And that's why you notice also in the seerah that the Sahaba used to supplicate six months before Ramadan that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allows them to reach the month of Ramadan. Now they've reached the month of Ramadan and they were granted some level of success in rendering the ibadat that are favorable to Allah and, and acceptable by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then they would supplicate for six months after Ramadan has done, the ibadat has done. Ramadan is finished, the ibadat has done. They would supplicate for six months that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepts the deeds that they offered in Ramadan. If you and I knew that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepted one deed from us, we would consider ourselves among the righteous. We would consider ourselves among the pious. How is that? 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, إِنَّمَا يَتَقَبَّلُ اللَّهُ مِنَ الْمُتَّقِينَ that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepts deeds from those who are pious and righteous. So if I knew that my deeds were accepted, I would label myself as Mr. Taqi or Mr. Pious or Mr. Righteous. Why? Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has accepted from me, but I don't know that. I don't know that. So I'm still in a state of apprehension. I'm still in a state of fear. I still supplicate that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepts my deeds because none of us truly knows if our deeds are acceptable to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or not. So we continue to supplicate, we continue to guard that intention before, during, and after the deed. So here the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa mentions these different types of sadaqat and he says, al kalimatu tayyiba, just saying kind words, saying kind words, just like when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about zakah and speaks about the genuine sadaqat. He says, قَوْلٌ مَعْرُوفٌ وَمَغْفِرَةٌ خَيْرٌ مِنْ صَدَقَةٍ يَتْبَعُهَا أَدَى وَاللَّهُ غَنِيٌّ حَمِيدٌ That saying, kalam that is tayyib, words that are tayyib, words that are like to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, وَمَغْفِرَةٌ and forgiveness, emptying your heart from that which is, uh, you know, will hurt you first and foremost, and then will hurt others, and then asking for forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, خَيْرٌ مِّن صَدَقَةٍ يَتْبَعُهَا أَدَى It's better than given monetary sadaqa that is followed by harm. So the objective is not to give the sadaqa, but rather to give it, displaying your level of righteousness and piety towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَاللَّهُ غَنِيُّ الْحَمِيدُ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the all-sufficient. Any sadaqa we give, we are the beneficiaries, so we're the ones who will benefit. And then the poor or the miskeen or the needy will benefit as well. الكلمة الطيبة صدقة and then المشي إلى إلى الصلاة صدقة every step we take towards the masjid we drive we walk whatever the case might be whatever more transportation we use this is also a صدقة on us this just goes to show that the صدقة in Islam the definition of صدقة is not restricted to money money is just one aspect of the صدقة money is just one aspect of the صدقة إذا المشي إلى المساجد صدقة verbal words kind words or صدقات المشي إلى المساجد صدقة and then ورفع الأذى عن الطريق صدقة even just removing harm from people's way from a pathway from a street from a walkway from a sidewalk that is considered a صدقة because your intention is to benefit others by not causing them harm to benefit others by not endangering their path or by removing that which is dangerous or harmful from their, you know, from their path. And it was mentioned in the hadith where the Prophet ﷺ tells us about the different levels of Iman. أعلاها قول لا إله إلا الله The highest of which say لا إله إلا الله وأدناها, huh? وأدناها إماطة الأذى عن الطريق This is like the lowest type of Iman. Means that if one did not find it in their hearts that they don't, they don't wish or they would not like for someone to be harmed or to the contrary, they may like somebody to be harmed means that they have not even lived up to the level of Iman that is considered to be the lowest. So removing harm from people's way is not a task or it's not a deed that should be undermined or should be despised, but it's rather something we should use it as an opportunity that if I see somebody in somebody's way that could cause harm to the children, to the adults, to the elderly, to those who, you know, can hardly, uh, you know, see their, their way or they feel their way, then that is also a form of salaqah. And then the hadith once again, and the most important part is for us to remember that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala expects of us to give the due gratitude for every joint he has created in our bodies. And in, and in this hadith, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa tells us that, يعني ما أمرتكم ما نهيتكم عنه فانتهوا وَمَا أَمَرْتُكُمْ بِهِ فَأْتُوا مِنْهُ مَا اسْتَطَعْتُمْ What I have forbidden you from attaining, then you must seize at once. Leaving that alone is a form of rendering, do gratitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and then attaining that which is obligatory to the best of our ability, to our fullest capacity, is also considered given shukr, the do gratitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for these joints that is created in our bodies, and then from that we work ourselves up to that which is mustahab, like to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the ruling with mustahab if we don't do it we don't get punished but if we do it with the right intention purely fi sabillah we get rewarded the makruh is the opposite if we 
stay away from doing the makruh with the intention to come close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to reap the reward from him, we get rewarded. If we do it, it's makruh, there's no punishment associated with it. And then we move ourselves up, you know, to another level, which is the level of the mubah. Eating, drinking, having intimate relations, uh, exercising, you know, doing any of these mubah activities, if we do it with the intention to come closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, for example, if we eat well in order to nurture our bodies, in order to strengthen our bodies to perform the ibadah, then that's an act of ibadah. If we sleep when we go to bed, in order for us to get, you know, rest and to rest our bodies, to get up and pray Salat al-Fajr and perform ibadah of the next day, then that is ibadah. If we exercise to strengthen ourselves, in the hadith the Prophet ﷺ says, الْمُؤْمِنُ الْقَوِي خَيْرٌ وَأَحَبُّ إِلَى اللَّهِ مِنَ الْمُؤْمِنِ الضَّيْفِ That the stronger believer is better and more love to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala than the weak believer. وَفِي كُلٍ خَيْرٍ Both of them have good in them. So strength of the believer is not limited to the strength of faith. Strength of faith. It also extends to the strength of the body. The strength of a person's personality, character, physical, uh, you know, you know, uh, endurance, uh, the the strength of financially being financially strong, being independently strong, all of that filters into and mold this personality that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala loves to see in the believer that this believer is strong in every possible way. هذا والله تعالى أعلى وأعلم سبحانك الله بحمدك نشهد أن لا إله إلا أنت نستغفرك ونتوب إليك سبحان ربك رب العزة عما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين جزاكم الله خيرا السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته